Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win, or you find a way to lose. Or you can find a way, in my opinion, to take it to the stupid and not hold your horses. Let me tell you something. The secret society is in full effect. It's got to be the secret society. Because Francis Ngannou has been begged and pleaded with to leave these boxers alone. But he says he's not done with boxing. He will not. Now remember, let me just finish my thought. He will not commit to PFL MMA even though he lost to Anthony Joshua. And he didn't just lose, he got tranquilized. He says, it's not over yet. Now, what, what, more, can, what more can Francis Ngannou do? I understand his coach, Dewey, he came out here and he was saying, um, yeah, Francis, Francis Ngannou, he, he, uh, he just didn't get a chance to show everybody what he could do. Uh, I know what Francis Ngannou can do. Matter of fact, in training camp, he was actually getting out the shower to take a piss, which is what we need him to do. We need him to show that he can be dedicated because most guys in training, when they're in the locker room taking a shower, they piss in the shower, but he actually got out. So that show. Like, do we just, he's just out here saying shit. Do we, they need to kind of cinch down around his neck and quiet him up. He doesn't be out here just saying anything sometimes. But Francis God was going to plug along. Now, I understand, and I think at this point in time, I don't think anybody is going to, I don't think there's any equity in uh, that win he got over Tyson Fury. I think whatever equity that may have built up as a result of that loss to Tyson Fury, I think Joshua... Uh, <coughs> uh, permanently eradicated that with that Nigerian British bing bing of a right hand that he dropped on Ngannou. Actually, three times he hit him with that right hand. The same goddamn right hand. Um, I just don't think there's any equity there uh, when it comes to Ngannou in boxing. Now, if Ngannou was to fight a Derek Chisora, um, Charles Mar Prince Charles Martin. Malik Scott. I mean, then you can say, okay, maybe Francis Ngannou can 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 pull off something there because I, I rewatched the AJ fight and Francis, he looked like he knew what he wanted to do, um, but at the same time, it looked like he was mimicking what Anthony Joshua was doing. If Anthony Joshua was up and down changing levels, Ngannou was up and down changing levels. If jo Joshua kind of pawned with the, the left hand to jab to measure distance, Ngannou was kind of pawned. I'm just not so sure Ingano needs to go the direction he's talking about going. Talking about he wants to keep his options go his options open, but he's looking for another high profile boxing match. So what do you guys think about that? All right? The man got a concussion by AJ. He fought Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury uh was just like a big sack of mashed potatoes, right? Tyson Fury, obviously, he didn't do something. Whether he didn't train or he didn't have his power up, something he dropped the ball somewhere. And as a result, Ngannou was able to kind of exploit the lack of discipline that Tyson Fury uh, showed during training camp and the lack of respect that he showed to Ngannou as a viable uh, opponent uh, that was... A live underdog and a threat. But if he was to go, he fought Fury, he fought AJ. Let, let's be real here for a second, right? He wants a high profile boxing match. There's only one name he's been calling out. He's been calling out Deontay Wilder, right? I, I, I'd rather see the 37 year old Francis Ngannou just, just, just go to MMA, you know, 
get your buzz back over there. Do something extremely violent to an opponent. Break a leg. Break the neck. You know, shit, kill him in the ring. And then come back for a boxing match. Because now you're coming off of a, a win, a, 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 a vicious, violent, disrespectful beat down of somebody. And now you can kind of puff out your chest and say, I want a high-profile boxing match. But to just come now after losing to Anthony Joshua, if, if he lands the big boxing match, <coughs> this just tells you that the secret society is, is in full effect and they're doing what's best for them. Because obviously, Francis Ngannou fighting, that, that means that there's a, a, some money somewhere. But him fighting Deontay Wilder, just be real. Do you really think Francis Ngannou can beat Deontay Wilder? Let's, let's just be real for a second. After seeing what happened there with Anthony Joshua, <coughs> now I'm not at all saying Deontay Wilder fights like AJ, but the fact that the straight right hand uh, Ngannou is susceptible to, and I don't think he's going to be able to ever get away from a right hand, especially when he's fighting a fighter who has you know 80 plus inch reach like him. Anybody with shorter arms or 68 to 75 inch reach, they probably can't get to Ngannou uh, the way Fury could, AJ could, and Wilder can. But I'm going to tell you right now, I personally think Deontay Wilder, I'm trying to be fair to Francis Ngannou, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a bad wagonist. Uh, <coughs> although Deontay Wilder doesn't really, he didn't really seem focused in his last fight, although I think if he was to get in the ring again, I, I would hope he let his hands go, because if he doesn't let his hands go, we just got to say Deontay Waters done. A boxing, he needs to just stop. But if he was a, to, to take the opportunity to fight Ngannou, which I would think they both would get paid handsome amounts of money, I, I would have to say Deontay Waters is a betting favorite. And then I think Ngannou goes from being the, 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 the MMA hero, still an inspiration, but almost like, laughing stock in the boxing world because here it is this big Herculean folklorish MMA powerhouse that comes over to boxing and everyone's thinking he's going to come out here and tranquilize the top guys and make boxing you know look like a joke and he lost to Tyson Fury uh, even though people felt he won that fight he got, he got hurt really bad against Anthony Joshua. They had hooked the oxygen up to him. But if you come at with Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder, you know, breaks him off. You know, it's, I just think for his confidence, um, for his profile, I just think he should f focus on some CB-level fighters. And I know some people are saying, well, shit, you know, Deontay Wilder, he's not even a D-level fighter. Deontay Wilder has no skill. I still think you got to make Deontay Wilder favorite in that fight. His hands are quick, um, and if he lets him go, he's knocked out big men before. Uh, and I think Ngannou is going to be there to be hit. But if Deontay Wilder, for some reason, if, if this fight happens and he can't get that right hand off, then Ngannou may have his first win. And I don't care what you say. If he beats a guy like Deontay Wilder, <coughs> they're going to take that win. They're, they're going to they're gonna run with it. They're going to run with that. Deontay Wilder is going to, going to go from being the, the guy who's high in ay ayahuasca now, who's more focused on being a junkie and feeling good and kumbaya and tongue-kissing men and women because uh, he's so giddy and happy to, to, to be in the, the guy who wanted to catch a body in the to this day and bomb squad guy. And that's how they're going to make him out to see him, the knockout artist, which Deontay Wilder obviously to a lot of us doesn't quite seem to be that guy anymore. With that being said, Ngannou says it's not over yet. Not at all. We're just getting started. But remember, <coughs> I did a video on this already. Ngannou is heavily involved in helping to grow and expand the PFL in Africa. And he's heavily involved with the Saudis when it comes to sports. And not just for Saudi, but also for Africa. 
he he has a he has a role where he's a key player, kind of like Anthony Joshua with the zone. It's something very similar. Uh, so so Francis Ngannou and the moves he's making, he's gonna make moves that are the best in the best interest for those members of the secret society who got behind him and put him in these positions to make 10 million, 20 plus million, and whatever X amount, whatever amount of money, unknown amount of money he's gonna make in his next fight. So I really think he, even if he wants to do something different than what we end up seeing him do when it comes to fighting, I just think he can't do it. I, I think they own him. I think Tyson Fury's own. I already know the zone owns AJ. Uh, but I, I think a lot of these guys, they're, they're, when they're getting paid that kind of money by the Saudis, you can't just go back home and be like, hey, I don't want to do it anymore. You see how Turkey al Sheik said if someone doesn't make it <coughs> for Tyson Fury and Yusuf, he doesn't care what the excuse is. If you don't make it in that ring on May 18th, you got to pay $10 million, a fine. And that right there gave me a peek behind the tent flaps on how Turkey al Sheik really rolls and does business. He's not playing around. And I just think when, when when you watch that, you can see Tyson Fury was uneasy. Like Tyson Fury was there curled up on the corner, you know, like he was cold in the room. He was just balled up and shit like shit. I don't want no problem with Alan, Alan Sheep. You know, Mr. Turkey, not <coughs> Mr. No Jiving Turkey. But we'll see how it goes. But as of right now, Nganu, the Nganu ship is going to continue to sail in the boxing world, in the boxing seas. And he wants another high-profile match, and he's been very vocal about fighting uh, Deontay Wilder. He says it's not over yet, but if he fights Wilder, and Wilder has had a tenth of what he's had in him before about wanting to show some violence in the ring, I think Wilder knocks him out, viciously knocks him out. And he's saying it's not over yet. It'll be over after that knockout. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.